Good morning, Jew. Good morning, Jew. I'm Katie Halper in New York City. And I'm Heather Gold in relatively temperate Oakland. I'm jealous of Jew, Heather, right now because it's freezing outside. And appropriately, I'd been feeling guilty for you and everyone else because I left Toronto just the day before the vortex hit. Coincidence? Uh, just good fortune, hmm. I think. Not because think. you run the weather? Jews run the weather? <laughs> right. If the gays can run the weather, why can't the Jews? Um, gays have, like, different mystical powers than Jews. It's like meteorological interior decorating. Could be, or... Which Jews aren't as good as, at. Oh, you're saying that that's what gays are good That's yeah. what has always struck me as why it makes sense that gays control the weather. As opposed to the the financial system of Jews. Right. right. So we have the finance, right? They have the weather. I think it's a fair <laughs> trade. We can't have everything. <laughs> this is our first story, the, the vortex. And it's freezing outside. I went out there uh, today, true story. And it's freezing. <laughs> But they're trying to use it as evidence that there's no global warming. Who's they? When you say they. Like the right wing. Rush Limbaugh's always like, oh, it's so cold Listen, today. I, ho- I thought there was global warming. I have one capitalist thing to say to them. Oh, yeah. They're, they're going to miss out on all kinds of opportunities and insulation and new kinds of vehicles and the clothing we're going to need right. because this is going to happen more. Also, we've had s- some people have died, which is really sad and scary. Where have people died? Um, one woman died in Ohio. Oh, Someone God. in Illinois. People have had heart attacks uh, shoveling snow. Uh, which technically, you're a lawyer. You may have some problems with people attributing that death to the vortex. I just went to law school. I'm not a lawyer. I, did I call you a lawyer or a jurist? I tried to call you, you a jurist. Called me, just call me a lawyer. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. No disrespect. Um, so what do we think right. about the vortex? Is it good for good for Jews or bad for Jews? I think pretty much cold is unequivocally bad for Jews in all times and all places. I mean, we are people of the desert and right. we like it. Right. Don't you feel relaxed in the desert when it's a dry, dry? Yes, but I'm actually always hot. I'm not, I'm not a person who's cold, um, which maybe means I'm not really Jewish. Like I, someone, ado- I was adopted or something. Maybe. It's, it's good for the Jews in that it's not being blamed on the Jews. It's one of the bad things that happens in the world that we don't get stuck with. You, don't, you, you really believe the gays are going to get stuck on the weather th- with the weather thing? Well, they, I mean, since they do control it, it's, it's only fair. I mean, Utah has decided, you know, the governor just today has decided to stop the, the same-sex marriages that were happening in Utah and told everybody there we're not going to recognize your marriages. So well, hopefully that will help warm the temperature. I think that's what his, he was thinking. Really? He thinks it's, ma- it's gay marriage that's... That's doing this? Be. You would think it would be heating things up. Or maybe because, uh-huh. you know, marriage can cool things out. It's true. More marriage, less sex. Okay, so polar vortex, bad for the Jews. I would say bad and good because it's a, one of those bad things that's going to not be blamed on the Jews. It, and I don't but think they, people blame it on the gays necessarily. Some do. But people will blame it on the weather. With the conspiratorial silver lining. Exactly. That's what it and, is. And some future mogul of uh, fleece clothing yet to come oh wow so that way it is good for the jews it's really we don't know who it could it'll probably be someone from finland that gets smart and starts selling everybody the stuff they've been wearing now i'm saying good for the Finns. the Finns are happy the Finns are happy people despite their very high suicide rate so Um, now the tiger mom is back moving on to story number two amy chua amy chua and her husband What's her husband's name? Um, Jared Bern- No, Jared Bernstein is like a an econ guy. Jed Rubenfeld. Jed, Jed Rubenfeld. Jed Rubenfeld. So they have this new book, The Triple Package, about how certain ethnicities, races, religions, you know, what have you, do better than others based on their income, their success, and their test scores. How about their mental health? How do they do with the DSM score? That's a good question. Obviously, the Jews invented that. But do you want to know who the people are who have succeeded? Obviously, Chinese and Jews, because that's who they are. Right. So they got to go with their own. They're just evaluating it purely on income. Income, test scores, and other metrics. Other metrics? Yeah, what are the other metrics? Penis size? That would that would definitely shift their numbers. Okay, so far we have Jews and Chinese. How about Koreans? No. How about uh, Japanese? Does she include gay people? Do we get no. in there? Cubans. She's going to go for Cubans. How do you know? They hate communism. 
And it's right. also a very driven immigrant culture. Like when you hear Jews go, oh, I really like X or Y right. ethnicity because they're just like me. These are the lists of ethnicities they usually go through. Nigerians? Oh, yeah, that totally makes sense. Mormons? she gives them an ethnicity if mormons are an ethnicity homos are an ethnicity also lebanese but these are all also people who have incredible amounts of anxiety the group is indians chinese iranians lebanese americans nigerians and cuban exiles i am feeling agita just hearing us all linked together well, they've missed gay people who have a lot of this but there's a little bit of a release valve on the queers they have a, a formula for this you want to know what it is it's just, they like them it's a superiority complex, insecurity, and impulse control. Those are the well, three all, elements of the triple meaning, package. Meaning that you have trouble controlling your impulses or you have no, great you're impulse good at it. control? You're good at it. I think the, the idea of being insecure is interesting um, and how that drives you to prove yourself. You're going to have to work more, harder because you're not going to be given a fair shot. Jews used to feel that way. Mormons probably think that too. Although Mormons, who knows, but... Mormons definitely have a whole oppression story they going do, on. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. They, that guy got beaten to a pulp. By a mob. They got chased out. Yeah. Yeah, was, they also did some crazy stuff, but the Mormons themselves like do black some... black people... Yeah. They're pretty they, racist, but... They were electroshocking gay men at BYU. I mean, they do some wacky they, stuff. Heather, they're trying to save them. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Do you know that Lou Reed got that, by the way? Yeah, he wrote the whole thing about it. Yes, the song. song. Kill your... Whatever. Kill your sons, fathers. So we think well, it's bad for the Jews. Let me think. First of all... I'm sure the Mormons are felling to no end to be compared to Jews. Right, I know. Because then they'll baptize more of us. They're like, you see, we're so similar. Let us baptize Anne Frank. Trust I us. I think She'll be they're going to hope that this book of hers will decrease the amount of work it takes to do the bo baptisms by proxy after death. Mm -hmm. Like that it's just because, you know, Mormons can baptize people without them being there. It's kind of an amazing virtual yeah. skill they have. I don't mind. Baptize me virtual v e -ba can you e-baptize me mormons because who knows maybe there is that guy what jesus and i mean I, the, the danger for me isn't saying that groups do better it's attributing it to some kind of biological thing saying that a higher percentage of black men than white men are in jail is not racist saying that it's because black men are inherently more criminal is to me the problem is the basic presumption that given the way things are in the U.S., this is what everyone should aspire, aspire to be to, great yeah. at. Like just because you've been awesome at the way things are doesn't mean you will be awesome at how they need to be. In right. fact, you'll probably have the most difficulty maybe working collaboratively, all these other things. The Cuban thing really bothers me because Cubans are hooked up by the United States when they come here. They have certain benefits. And up until recently, the Cubans who were coming to the United States were the richer Cubans because they were the ones who banned when Fidel Castro came because they didn't want their land to be taken away from them. So it's a very ahistorical analysis. She's really determined to be like the next Camille Paglia, isn't Maybe, she? She yeah. wants to be the next obnoxious, I'm going to say the thing no one else thinks they're right. brave enough to say, and then Although therefore... I do think that it's stupid that people are afraid to talk about certain groups being successful. Again, like I just think you have to talk about why. You know what? Then it's also bad for like the children of everyone in right. these groups because then it's like, what if you're not a not successful Iranian, right. Lebanese, uh, Cuban, East Indian? I mean, come on. So this is bad for everyone. We're this is bad for reasons. for underperformers who are the early adopters of tomorrow. Mm. Nice. I like that. Heather, I think you just started a foundation. <laughs> um, underperformers Anonymous. So do we think this is good for the Jews or bad for the Jews? That they came out with the book? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, strangely, uh, probably bad for the Jews. I'm going to say bad. It makes us look, like, self-obsessed. I feel like it's also bad because people are going to be like, you see, the Jews are better and they run things. The good thing is that she's the face of the book, not him. Right. So really, who cares? It's all going to fall on the Chinese. Thank God we dodged a bullet. In front of every nice <laughs> Jewish man is an is a very ambitious Asian driven. woman. Driven tiger mom, Asian woman, yeah. So our third story of the day is, oh, it's not very pleasant to talk about. It's about a landlord, a slumlord who was oh. killed. But he is it's a also Shonda, he, Shonda of the week. the week. Menachem Stark. Eh, I just sounded like Israeli. That was weird. Eh. <laughs> he was kidnapped outside his office Thursday, and then he was found dead, and he was literally smoldering from the waist down on Sunday when they found him in a dumpster on sounds... Long Island. 
the, the New York Post had a very tasteful headline, as there as is their want. I don't. One of the my favorites is when Yasser Arafat was dying. Uh, was it ain't over till the Yasser Arafat lady sings? Um, or no, sorry, it was it ain't over till the Arafat lady sings. So it was actually right, much more right. clever than I just presented it as. Um, yeah. So their their lovely headline was Slumlord Killed found burned in dumpster. Who? Didn't want him dead. Didn't is italicized. And Menachem is a Hasid, right? He's like a with Hasid. A big, yeah, he's a Hasid. With a big strummel, which is that big fur hat. Right. There are two narratives. One is that he was terrible to everyone. He was a slumlord, and that's kind of undeniable. He was a slumlord. Um, other people said he was generous and gave people stuff and lent people money, but I'm, I'm sure he wasn't yeah. just... I think it's really common for people to be both. I really don't know why people need it to be one or the other. I think it's... I mean, what is The Sopranos? But a story mm. of, I fucking kill you, and I do anything for you, my family. Yeah, I mean, it's... He owed over a million dollars to loan sharks. Um, he had these prostitution crack dens that he that he owned and didn't do anything to help. Here. Hold on, he, he owed money to crack dens? No, no, no. He ro- bought them. He bought them. As property. He, but what did his rabbi think about that? Oh, I Can mean... Can I get the number? Exactly. Are you kidding? I Why didn't he tell me? Um, and he was always, like, running around. People would try to serve him with papers, and they'd say his name. They'd be like, are you Menachem Stark? And he'd run in the other direction. They'd be like, I can't tell the difference between him and the other guy with the pace and the exactly, shrimp yeah. and the beard. He'll and be so like, maybe, maybe he became a Hasid just to disappear. Maybe. The- He's like, I couldn't hear you. My pace were in front of my ears. I wasn't running <laughs> I- away from you. A commenter on this website called failedmessiah.com said his slanted stremel on his head gives his crookedness away. I saw that. And someone else wrote on the same site, sentence his kidnappers to live in one of his buildings. That sounds like a Yiddish thing. May they sentence his kidnappers to live in one of his buildings. Some law enforcement guy who was off the record said he's a Hasidic Jew from Williamsburg and we think he's a scammer. That's like not what I want to hear coming from law enforcement. Not that I'm surprised. It seems a little bit anti-Semitic to me. Um, Uh, What if he said he's a priest? In downtown Manhattan, and we think he's a scammer. Scammer. That's fine. If you said he's a priest in in downtown Manhattan, we think he's a pedophile. That would be the parallel. He's saying like, look, he's a Hasid from Williamsburg, and we think it's a scammer. He's saying like, it goes with the territory. Now it may go with the territory. That's the other thing that I'm uncomfortable about saying, but it kind of it's true. Not that all of them are, but some of them certainly are. And the other weird thing is that it's so funny how little I identify with these people. Like, they're Jews, but I have nothing to do with them. Yeah, they have nothing but if to you, do with me. And, would and you they say don't that think of me, of me as a Jew. And lefty Katie Halper, would you be comfortable saying that sentence about any other group? It is true about these people. Would you be saying that about African Americans, no, Latinos, I, anyone? Not. I know that. Well, then why is it all right for Hasids? I take license that I don't necessarily deserve. Right, because right. I'm not, I don't identify with them. But I definitely say things about religious Jews that I wouldn't say about other religious people. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, like Chris Rock says, it's different to call your own kid stupid. Yeah. If someone's calling your kid stupid. Yeah. Anyway, so this is so bad for the Jews because we we really don't need another slumlord who's Jewish. That another. we don't need. We need that like we need a hole in the head. Hole in the yarmulke. You think that... Uh, that an Amy Chua and, and uh, nameless Jewish husband's book, I can't remember his name, Rubenfeld or something? Yeah, something like that. Do you think there's anything in there about, uh, about slumlords, like of that group, so they, their propensity to be slumlords? Right. What do you think? Maybe they'd see this as successful. Compared to like news about torturing husbands into d- granting divorces, although you know my slight feminist read on that, um, compared to that and and cutting severing boys penises sucking Ugh. blood from babies penises which is, has that happened. we need some okay listen and, here's request and, our viewers and mol- molesting slum lording is not that bad on, on the scale <laughs> of, on the grand if scheme. any of our viewers know theme. know any good stories about some hostages yeah send them our way send it, because send i only yeah. know the stories about the scam so anyway listen i'm glad you're keeping warm jew thank you very much. Uh, it's very lovely here. I recommend Maybe I'll visit. you all come west. Come visit. We could record in front of the camera together. Live, yeah. Have a show. We'll do put together a show. Yeah, and if you have tips about uh, what whether something was good for the Jews or bad next week, and if you want to tell us what you think about these movies being made about two Jewish con men, American Hustle and the Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street, good or bad for the Jews, we'll come down on that next week. You tell yeah, us your okay. answer. Yeah, we'll have a movie special. Juvie special. All right.